So I thought I'd make a video of the entire Frazetta collection that I've accumulated for quite some time. I guess first off we'll just go through the prints. All these are reproductions. Unfortunately I don't own any originals. Which would be awesome if I did. First one on the left. I'm not really sure what that cover came from. I did pick that up I think in Nashville. The guy was selling it for $10 in the frame and it's probably the best frame that I have. And then as we pan right there's obviously uh, the Death Dealer picture. It moves over to the Fire and Ice cover and then the one on the far right I believe is a cover to a Conan book, Conan versus the Snow Giants, and some of these are a little spaced out, so I'll just shift downward. There's one of my favorites. I remember painting like a replica of part of this in high school, sort of like the first one. I'm not sure the exact cover, but my guess is it might be, could be Tarzan, but. Somehow I doubt that with the blonde hair. So we go down, we go, uh, we start with the creepy cover. It's to number 11. Obviously King Kong. This one, um, my wife found at a comic book shop. I think it was hanging in the window from what she said and the guy did not want to sell it to her so she somehow convinced him to sell it and I still haven't asked how much she paid for that which is probably good going over this is another one um, unfortunately I don't have frame for any of these bottom ones I sort of accumulated more pictures than I had frames so they've stayed out of the frame for some time I just found this out that this is a cover to a cane book and I'm not sure exactly which one but also a real nice one that I like this is a cover to a creepy I believe it's number five I actually have that issue so if it's wrong we'll catch it later this one doesn't have the title of creepy on the top like the replication of uh, King Kong does, but I still like that one pretty well. This one's probably my newest one um, as when it comes to posters. Frankenstein, and this is uh, Creepy number 10. I do not have the actual um, magazine of this one, but one of my favorites I found at a uh, comic convention, I believe. And we'll start from the left and sort of go through each item as quickly and thoroughly as possible. Here are the uh, book collections. That I have. Now all these are basically used. They've never um, I don't have any brand new ones. But here's the entire uh, Death Dealer series by James Silk, I believe. Uh, yeah. I've read these, and they're actually really good. Um, they sort of give you a defined look into the character behind the painting, so it gives him, you know, more three dimensions. It has all the classic covers, like uh, that one of the poster. There's that one. Probably one of my favorite. I wish I had that one in a print. The next one is Lost on Venus. Pretty uh, unique Frazetta one. Uh, not quite as dark as some of his other ones, but some of his are uh, fairly colorful. The Solar Invasion. 
these these two I have not read. I don't think I've read um, any of the rest of them besides the Death Dealer ones. They're older prints, and they're I'm sort of afraid to handle them a, a bunch just because they might start deteriorating. Both these are Flashing Swords books. I believe I found these at a flea market, maybe for, I think it's like $5 for both of them. And there's Flashing Swords 2. Here's uh, Princess of Mars. A lot of these are, um, like this is Edgar Rice Burroughs and a few of the other ones are. I think Lost on Venus is. He had a tendency to illustrate a lot of his books. We'll move on to the Frank Fazetta books themselves that are pretty much just about him and his work. This one's probably the newer one out of the three um, that I've gotten. Most, you know, some of them do have duplicates of the paintings and a lot of the same information but there is I usually try to go through them beforehand and see if there's any you know extra little tidbits about other work or other uh, artists he's worked with so there's that one there's Legacy and this is the first one I've gotten and it's Icon probably my favorite one, it uh, has a lot of the um, the cartooning, sort of caricature work that he does, which is really good. These next ones are just uh, Frazetta related things that I have. Um, this one is just a previews magazine with an article on Fire and Ice. The movie he illustrated based on the painting we saw earlier. This is a actually a Ralph Batsky, um, and I'm probably saying that wrong, but it is the, a book on him, but him and Frazetta did Fire and Ice together, pretty much working hand in hand, and it has a pretty good article on um, you know, some of the development. Um, it shows sort of Frazetta of working with the actors and the rotoscoping that they did. Um, moving on, this is Al Cap's collection of The Short Life and Happy Times of Snoo. This one I pulled out because I'm not exactly sure if Frazetta illustrated in these. I know he illustrated from about the mid 60s to the or mid 50s to the early 60s. This one does have a section from 59, so as just sort of a reference, he did some illustration on that strip for you know quite a few years. So I just thought I would bring that out. And moving on to, I guess, more comic related. These are all the comics that I've obtained with either have his covers or fully illustrated. Usually if I stumble across one, I'll pick it up. We'll start from this end. There's Vampirilla. I believe this is just the cover. And probably didn't pay much for that. These two, I believe, are almost the same comic. They are illustrated inside by him. And it's really good, you know, almost soap opera type of illustration, but, you know, quality figures. Here's two of The Shining Knight. Um, I was lucky to find the second one. It took me forever to finally track one down, but I did find it. And here are the 
Jaguar gods. I'm not exactly sure if this is all of them. I highly doubt it. Um, it's zero and one, but they tend to be slightly hard to find. And then on to probably my favorite, um, the Death Dealer series. And it's all four. Of course, uh, most of you that have followed Frizetta know that uh, Glenn Danzig wrote um, all these books right here. Unfortunately, one of my other favorite artists, Simon Beasley, only illustrated this one here, and it is some awesome illustration. Uh, one of my other favorite artists. Jump back here and check out these real quick. Um, first off, we have the Death Dealer statue, the same from the print. Um, there was this was the second statue I ever saw. The first one is Death Dealer on the horse, and it is it's more than this is set up more like an action figure. Um, it doesn't move, but it's it's sort of plastic. I think that one's a real statue, and it is uh, quite expensive. It was back then too when it was brand new. Never could quite afford that one. And then. I've got all these framed. I've read them once and then just framed them up. Um, the creepy number 11, same as the poster. There's creepy. It was actually 15. Um, the caveman and the executioner. Move this. That is actually creepy 17. And then Thane. On creepy 27 all pretty awesome prints unfortunately those creepies aren't in the best of condition it's hard to find them pristine but once I boarded them up I was I was happy with that it didn't really matter that they were a little creased so coming over here some of the DVDs and videos this is uh, the VHS version of Fire and Ice. Actually, probably one of my first purchases ever on eBay. Um, I remember finding this and being super excited about it. Haven't played this version in a while. It's a little beat up, mainly because once it came out on DVD, I believe I re received this as a gift one year and that's a pretty nice got sort of a hologram cover I don't know if you can tell that and then here's the uh, sort of documentary on Frazetta painting with fire this is very interesting if you're interested in uh, Frazetta definitely pick this up it interviews him really late in life um, which most of the books didn't go too much in detail about that but it talks about um, how he overcame some of his physical ailments and uh, some medical conditions later on, which is uh, super inspiring. Okay, on to some magazines. Here is Erie, and it is number two, uh, collector's edition. Um, I would love to get three more Eries and frame them up like the Creepies. But it's the only one I've been able to uh, get my hands on so far. Um, these all are a series that was released. I think it was in 98. And it's Frank Frazetta Illustrated. It doesn't have comics with his illustration. But it does have um, some amazing artists that do uh, short stories. All, co all collected together in uh, these magazines. Um, this one, for example, has Alex Horley 
a uh, great illustrator, one of my favorites, Tony Daniel, also. And then there's, they all had Frazetta covers on them, which was probably a major selling point for me. There's another Kane cover. And this one has uh, the Hildebrandt Brothers, another great set of painters, Alex Worley again. There's another, there's Conan, cover. it was a shame that they stopped printing those, uh, they were great series and a lot of good artists that I had never heard of prior to the magazines were featured there. Um, here's sort of an example where the collection started getting a little haywire. Um, these are album covers with Frazetta art on them. The reason for me purchasing these had nothing to do with the music on them. It was primarily just for the art, so don't really uh, look at me as a Molly Hatchet fan. Just more of an extreme Frazetta fan. So there's Death Dealer. And that one. I believe that's Conan. But if Molly Hatchet has anything going for them, at least they have good taste in art. Here's a soundtrack to the movie Hotel, Hotel Par Paradiso. This shows a little bit more of his cartoony style, which I personally like as much as his uh, sort of more fantasy illustration. There's the Nazareth cover. And to sort of sum everything up, this was a catalog I received a long time ago. I guess it was around 98. And this had all of the Frazetta prints you could buy. I tended to try to find them out in stores. They seemed a little bit cheaper, but at least this sort of gave me a guide as to what was out there, what I could look for, and sort of you know, track down some of my favorites, but a good uh, sample of his work, but that's pretty much it. That's sort of an overview of the entire collection with a little bit more detail and going through every item individually, but if that's something you're interested in, you know, so am I, so... So I spent a lot of time collecting and probably many more years collecting, so I will end it there.